I'm Jennifer Walker. Um, this is my husband, Art Walker, and we're standing on our farm in western South Dakota, just east of Belfouche in Butte County. And we're here talking today about a, a grant that we got from North Central Region, SARE, to investigate the use of winter camelina in this, in this area. We, we, we don't actually have it this year, but that's not because it's not a great crop and it, it does work really well. And it could work really well for western South Dakota, especially there's a lot of forage producers, much like us out here. We do a lot of forage production. We do the, the cover crops. This is when we're usually going in between a, a alfalfa grass mix that'll be in a, in a hay crop for maybe a decade. We'll run a couple of years of this type of stuff to to grow feed, to try and build a little soil structure and whatnot. And Camelina worked really well in that out here. So it's a cover crop that's also a cash crop, and um, the product of the Camelina seed and the Camelina oil and the meal. Um, there's a lot of emerging markets for those things. I think they're they're not they're not all well developed yet. But I think between um, between the BTUs involved in that crop for uh, biofuels, particularly jet fuels, uh, um, so sort of a renewal renewable jet fuel. There's a lot of interest in it for that reason. Um, it's a high omega-3 crop, so the potential for being used in um, livestock supplements and even human uses, there's a, I, I just, um, between one thing and another, if you get to, if you get to looking into camelina oil, it has a ton of potential, as I say, emerging markets that could be really exciting coming down the you know coming down the pike if you're selling it for seed and you need to get that seed clean so that you can so that it can be sold as you know pure live seed of winter camelina that little seed and pennycrest seed are really hard to separate and so <laughs> can't be um, done <laughs> so if you're selling it as jet fuel like Pennycrest is great jet fuel, but if you're selling it as camelina seed, you really need to be able to separate those out or else really have your field clean, which might be hard to do if you're in an organic situation where you don't want to be spraying out your, your pennycrest before you plant camelina. It was kind of a weird year, 2020, where there, there was drought and um, that we also had a bad um, a bad time with alfalfa weevil. And so early on in the spring, when our bee guys had brought the bees out, the alfalfa weevil, the, the weevils had wiped out the blossoms on the alfalfa. So when I did sweeps to, to see, you know, where we found all the bugs and bees in particular, there were like, I found, I spent the morning and found like one bee in the alfalfa that was probably on its way to the camelina. And when I swept, <laughs> I swept the camelina for bees, um, and I pinched off my net. I went to open it to count bees, and there's just a whoosh of bees. <laughs> I I counted sixty, you know, I guessed sixty, but really it was I was trying not to be stung because it was just so many bees. Uh, we we tend to get alfalfa, and in the springtime, this this whole valley, we've been just getting pounded with alfalfa weevils. Well, the answer seems to be to spray and spray and spray. And so then your insects take more of a beating and your birds take more of a beating. And we just want to get away from that. So we're trying to do as little, if any, spraying as possible, especially with the insecticides. Just don't want to do that. So we're going to diversify and we go to vetches. We go to different clovers. We go to different grasses that we're, you know, we're not going to get completely hammered by the alfalfa weevils. And if we've got a crop like camelina to fill in some of those gaps, great. 